If you wanted to learn more about philosophy and spirituality, but felt intimidated by ancient Greek or Sanskrit, is it too embarrassing to admit that we are more than the body? Are you afraid to bring up reincarnation over coffee? Well, we love coffee and Plato, Buddhism, and Sri Ramana Maharshi. And we think these teachers and systems have some use today. This is the Beware How program, Mystic Philosophy Made Practical. I'm Bob, speaking weekly with Scott and Ryan. We're three conscious creatives and formerly closeted mystics trying to unpack the inaccessible. According to the mystics, the truth cannot be spoken, but we'll try to talk about it anyway. Hello, I'm Bob, and this is the Beware How program. Um, Today is Monday, April 27th, and today my friends and I will be discussing three different categories of content um, that this podcast, this email newsletter, this kind of content stream project is focused on, um, which I call mindful, metaphysical, and non-dual. Um, in preparation for these, I wrote kind of too much um, about each category, so it makes more sense um, to just break them up into three separate episodes. Uh, so today is number one on mindful material, just all the systems that kind of ladder up under that, um, teachers, um, practices, etc. cetera. Um, the typical format of this show is more kind of personal shares about this material, Um, We do some academic context about each philosophy, and then we close the episode with the practical application up. We definitely want to, um, you know, offer some use in the day-to-day application. Um, However, this this episode is a bit unique. Um, It's the intro. It's we're kind of defining these terms first. Um, So because we're making it number one, just roll with us on the introductory episode. Um, And so that said, we should probably tell people who the hell we are first. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Bob Peck. I grew up and I live in Austin, Texas. Um, I'm married to an absolute queen, Melissa, who just gave birth to our son, Bobby, a.k.a. Baby Bob, (laughs) a.k.a. Cinco, (laughs) Cinco. uh, because he's the fifth. (laughs) Um, Why did we do that to him? (laughs) Um, he's going to be Bob in a world of Aidens I went to the University of Texas for film and comparative religion I graduated in 2011 and um, as I've told these guys in the past I I went for film and all my electives were in religious studies And so um, in year four, at some point, um, I went to the counselor, um, probably hung over, and they were like, um, you know, all your extra hours are in religious uh, classes. If you just stuck around for another year, um, you could get one of those degrees also. So I did that. Um, And it was great. I read, um, I did New Testament scholarship. We did, I did comparative religion, um, read Yogananda. Thich Nhat Hanh, um, and more of these kind of sages and thinkers and scholars, and really just saw the parallels um, between these systems, religious systems and spiritual systems. Um, Yes, they're different, um, obviously, but they have this kind of interesting underlying connectivity, Um, you know, the golden rules, kind of just the beginning. Um, But that's what this whole thing is about, is us kind of going through these ideas. Um, and then just lastly, I work in tech now. I work at Facebook, um, but I have made documentaries about spirituality and advocacy for the past 10 years since graduating. And um, so, yeah, I'm a creative with some spiritual inclinations at a massive global corporation. Um, I do want to pass it to you guys, but I feel like this disclaimer is important and that is uh and i promise (laughs) this is a three-person discussion show i get it um but i just i have to bring up the fact that we are indeed three white men (laughs) um and we know that the world is just dying for the opinions and thoughts of three white men please more information (laughs) from three whites 
Um, so look, dear listeners, please know we are aware um, that there is a decisively clear lack of voices and representation in modern media, even still in 2020, which is crazy. Um, and we are glad to help address that in some small way. Um, I think the plan for this show kind of long term is to eventually have guests, many of whom will be women and people of color. Um, this email newsletter I've been writing for a while now, um, some of these topics obviously references teachings and concepts by all people of all backgrounds. Um, I would even say Asian and Indian thinkers in particular have enormously shaped my understanding of reality. And side note, look, whenever we're done recording, whenever this thing wraps up, I'm going to hurry up and go make lunch for this gorgeous Mexican-American woman who's currently watching the baby we made. Um, if it's not clear, I should say that's my wife. I was calling her my pregnant roommate there for a while <laughs> as a joke. And don't sure do that. that one. <laughs> Please don't do that, future fathers. Um, <laughs> she is the love of my life. Um, so that said, um, you know, definitely wanted to make that clear and, um, take it away, Scott Stanley. <laughs> uh, hi, yeah, I'm Scott. I, I should probably start by saying I, I, I've known Bob since high school. Um, we're, we met in the, the, uh, hallways, I think of the theater department back when we were both, uh, experimenting with our arts in our young lives and stuff. And, uh, I, I got into that scene through my brother who, um, works in theater and, uh, that's where I, I kind of took off into the arts from there. I, um, have been doing music, uh, since before then I, a musical family that I came from. Um, and, uh, what else? I went to UT Austin, got a degree in writing, uh, because I'm also real passionate about that. Although I can't ever seem to decide what kind of writing I want to do. So I jump around all the time. Uh, but that just seems to be what, uh, what's fun to me, I guess. So yeah, I jump around a lot of different things. Uh, I live in, Sh I was born and raised in Austin, uh, family from Texas, many ge generations back, but now I live in Chicago. Um, and for the last like eight years, I've been running my own business, taking dogs on hikes in forest preserves. So in case you had any, uh, doubts as to how much of a hippie I am, there's your answer. <laughs> and, um, King hippie. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So that's how I pay the bills. And in my spare time making music, uh, writing, um, uh, a screenplay, a little bit of, uh, I, definitely not nearly as published as I should be, but I, I do enjoy writing and, and like creating the content. And one of these days I'll actually, um, put it out there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, more, more published in, in terms of music. I have a group here that I play with and, um, yeah, I guess through all of that, I've been always, um, very curious about philosophy and spirituality and um and and other things connected to that history world studies uh and uh took a lot of classes uh, about that stuff at ut like bob did um in fact we i think we shared uh one or two <laughs> of those classes um and uh yeah i was born and raised in like a baptist setting um and then in high school kind of started reading um uh, not about Gnostic Christianity and reading stuff just from all over. I, I got, I, my, both my parents are scientists, so I'm like fascinated by, um, science, science fiction, philosophy of science. Um, uh, yeah. So just uh, absorbing as much as I can and, uh, been a friend of Bob's ever since. So just happy to like, you know, come on and, uh, listen to him talk about all these interesting <laughs> things and uh, ask him questions when I get confused about it. So yeah, glad to be here. <laughs> nice um my name is ryan paget um i am a new media artist based in austin um grew up in michigan went to school in chicago art school in chicago and then moved to austin um my day-to-day -day, uh currently work for an experiential design studio called accomplice and we build um, all sorts of um, interactive installations and uh, brand activations and um, uh, new media art. So, um, a lot of my free time, I do a lot of visual work, uh, VJing for concerts and shows and a little bit of stage design and, 
Um, I make a lot of neat little interactive art pieces of my own. Uh, Amazing. <laughs> You're modest. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that are usually uh, for, yeah, an, a kind of event style or exhibition style. So um, that's uh, kind of my day to day. My uh, spiritual practice really started in 2011 um, when I moved to Austin. Um, actually, probably just before that, it was like my last year in college. Uh, a friend of mine handed me a book called Be Here Now by Ram Das. And uh, that book um, flipped a switch for me. Um, at the time, I was in college and experimenting with psychedelics. And so uh, that book was very timely and um, got, got me very curious. And, uh, and that is what I have been studying ever since. Um, when I moved to Austin, um, I met Bob on my third day in Austin. Uh, and we started talking about spirituality and psychedelics and um and then uh were initiated into uh, kriya yoga and that was kind of the really the the beginning of my my current spiritual practice and um ever since then it's taken me a lot of different ways and uh kind of following me wherever my heart takes me um I, a lot of the topics I study nowadays and I, I, I read most and I'm most passionate about are things like uh, fear and vulnerability, um, emotional intelligence, um, mindfulness and non-duality. Um, and um, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Beautiful. Yeah, we'll have to tell the story of us meeting uh, at some point. It's kind yeah, of funny. yeah, it's a good one. Um, it's really good. And Scott's involved. So anyway, we'll tease it. But um, I was going to mention, we, you know, that was yeah. part of the, the, the start. I mean, these conversations that we're having started a very long time ago on a porch. A very long time ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's and right. now they're happening, uh, you know, in a podcast. A, a big southern porch was my pulpit for many years. <laughs> um lone star was my holy water <laughs> um <laughs> toward the end of the, the service took place around 11 p.m um so okay so we won't do that every time to you guys <laughs> as far as explaining who we are but it is number one of this thing um and so you know it's what this is you gotta know who we are um ryan i'm glad you've mentioned be here now Famous book, 1971, I think. should know that. Um, this project is called Beware How. <laughs> it's a joke on Rondas' book. Um, he's a fundamental teacher to all of us. And um, the late great, who just passed away in December, um, definitely owe so much to him. Absolutely. Um, as far as, you know, him just tirelessly lecturing about this material. Um and, uh, you know, the fact that he, this organization still carries his, um, his work and teachings, the Be Here Now Network, um, run by some amazing people it's based in Maui and they were his caretakers and, um, they're still going strong. So shout out to the Be Here Now Network. We love you guys. Um, but yeah, so this, this project Beware How, I think it's important to just get you guys, um, familiar, get get you listeners familiar um, with the fact that um, it's all about sign pointing. Um, that's really all we're trying to do. Um, we don't have all the answers. Our thesis is that the answers exist, um, you know, in this kind of beautiful variety of books and teachers and paths and ultimately in our own depths within every being. Um, so kind of our job or what what the three of us intend to do and on our future guests is, is merely to point at different interesting avenues um, to share new concepts that you might not be familiar with, or, or maybe refresh on some old ones um, that you would resonate with. Um, not everything should vibe with you. I just, I wrote that on the script in all caps, super important. Not everything should or will, um, you know, uh, pique your interest, but one or two might. Um, this great Saint Ramakrishna said that you don't find water 
by digging many shallow holes. You dig one deep one, and there's your well. Um, so kind of in that sense, may we all hit our own spring of well water of wisdom and love. Um, that's the mission statement, I'd say, of this whole thing. Um, and so, yeah, moving into kind of definitions, um, you know, working with this spiritual material, made films about this stuff, read a bunch of books, um, you know, interviewed uh, preachers and gurus and all these people who um, hopefully they still have my number uh, so we can reach out to them in the future. Um, but, um, you know, kind of working with this material over the years, I, I really realized that um, there are kind of three distinct categories of concepts um, and kind of information that we'll be writing about in the emails and also exploring further in this show. Um, I just call them mindful. Mindful is number one, metaphysical and non-dual. Um, I realize that definitions are needed. Um, that's what these first couple episodes are about. And what's kind of cool about this project is I've never really seen that this exact type of segmentation. Um, that's kind of an original thing. It's not really anywhere else um, as far as these divisions. I'm not trying to be an infomercial host um, <laughs> in, in talking about this stuff. You found um, it here first. But but <laughs> this is number one, basically. This is the original source. <laughs> For this type of segmentation, um, mindful, metaphysical, and non-dual, hopefully that um, kind of helps you guys uh, get a high-level overview of kind of spiritual, philosophical content. So mindful um, is the first one, and basically I'm going to ramble on, hopefully in an entertaining way. Scott and Ryan, please jump in um, and stop this stream of endless uh sound waves and concepts uh, <laughs> as i go here um but but you know mindful to start it off you, you you're probably familiar um with that term dear listener and you guys certainly are um because it is everywhere now um i just saw mindful magazine at the stand at the cashier uh the, you know the checkout which is cool to me i think that's really cool um, and we'll get to that. So what I'm calling mindful material is rooted in secular mental practices, kind of mind training practices that stem from Buddhism and ancient Greek philosophy, uh, particularly Zen Buddhism, which does have an emphasis on presence. Um, other Buddhist traditions have more astral realm stuff going on. Um, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, for example, is very kind of um, dimensions and demons and angels. Um, but Zen doesn't deal with any of that. It's a breath and the now and, you know, the kind of current experience. Um, Thich Nhat Hanh is the greatest living Zen Buddhist teacher. He's written tons of books. He is a 93-year-old Vietnamese Yoda type of figure um, <laughs> who everyone should be acquainted with. He's a genius. Um, he was not fun fact. He was nominated by Martin Luther King Jr. for the Nobel Peace Prize in the 1960s. Don't think anyone else can say that. Um, this is a quote from him on this stuff. He says, there are two ways to wash the dishes. The first is to wash the dishes in order to have clean dishes. The second is to wash the dishes in order to wash the dishes. While washing the dishes, one should only be washing the dishes, which means that while washing the dishes, one should be completely aware of the fact that one is washing the dishes. The fact that I'm standing there and washing these bowls is a wondrous reality. I'm being completely myself, following my breath, conscious of my presence, and conscious of my thoughts and actions. There's no way I can be tossed around mindlessly like a bottle slapped here and there on the waves. So good. Beautiful. <laughs> um, presence. 
presence during chores. And that's, uh, that's how you know you're doing something right, I guess. <laughs> Instead of, ah, oh, these are so dirty. You know, yeah. Or that meal wasn't even that good. Else that you could possibly you know? be thinking about. I mean, that is yeah, that right. What you're, uh, I feel like often what happens when you're doing chores or washing the dishes, I'm doing everything. I'm thinking about everything except for washing the dishes. You know, it's a good reminder. Yeah. Everything else. What's what's yeah. due tomorrow? What's right. who you need to email? Exactly. You know. Yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. Um. So good that's practice. that's really zen. I think that yeah that that's the main focus. Um, but as a side note, you can't really talk about Zen. Um, actually you can't really talk about Zen. <laughs> uh, it's this whole kind of non-intellectual thing. Um, th the presence mindset, what I was going to say was the presence mindset chips away at intellectual concepts. Um, and Zen teachers throughout the centuries kind of articulate that concepts are a mental blockade against presence or against the experience of living. Um, you know, Zen scholar is kind of an oxymoron. It's just, uh, you know, it's not an intellectual pursuit. It's an experiential. Um, and so you guys might have heard of these things called koans, is what um, Zen teachers have used for a long time that are kind of simple paradoxes that are designed to infuriate you. This is a nice description. The koan serves as a surgical tool used to cut into and then break through the mind of the practitioner. Koans aren't just puzzles that your mind figures out and suddenly proclaims, aha, the answer is three. No, they, what they do is they wait for you to open, enough, uh, open up enough to allow that space necessary for them to enter into your depths. It's just kind of like a paradox puzzle um like the sound of what is the sound of one hand clapping is like mm. a famous one um yeah so like letting the mind hit some logical absurdities so that you you're kind of forced to uh go beyond go go into somewhere else your mind isn't used to going i think which i enjoy <laughs> exactly yeah you get um it, it frustrates the rational mind the analytical yeah part of the mind um that the buddha sometimes called monkey mind it's kind of designed to break it um yeah there's a ton of koans and there's you could we could probably do one on them but i'll just keep yeah. moving <clears throat> um dt suzuki was a really famous 20th century zen teacher um and uh i believe he wrote zen mind beginner's mind i'm not positive i should know that um, but he says, if asked what Zen teaches, I would say that Zen teaches nothing. Whatever teachings there are in Zen come out of one's own mind. A very anti, like, learning. I mean, it's, they're, they're great. <laughs> they're, it's, it's as cool as you've heard, you know? It's like, it's, Zen has, like, in italics, has, like, this, like, adjective of, like, oh, it's very chill now. You know, it's stripped of its yeah. kind of initial meaning but but uh look into it if you're not familiar because it's a it's a really cool um you know practice mm. um zen buddhism also well i just say as a as a kind of scholarly context um when you know buddhism is from india zen is more popular in japan china and um Thich Nhat Hans from vietnam um when when buddhism came from india and went east it eventually it it hit china and and combined with with taoism and so that's kind of, zen is kind of the product of um indian buddhism and chinese taoism which are just two cool really cool systems on their own and and got to talk about taoism um briefly here as well if we're talking about older systems that um you know are are kind of the ancestors to modern day mindfulness and mindful material um you know Taoism is definitely in there um it comes it all comes from lao tzu who was an ancient chinese philosopher um we think he was real although there's not much about him um his name means old master in uh, mandarin 
And um, it's we just have this one text called the Tao Te Ching. It's terrific. Um, it's from the 6th century uh, BCE. And um, super simple, beautiful, um, practical advice. It, it's, it talks a lot about surrender, um, surrendering to the Tao or the way, the way of things. Um, it's nature centric, um, kind of unfolding is, is part of a thematic, but there's not really metaphysics going on, um, like in most ancient religions, particularly. Um, it's just simple, practical advice. Here, here are a few um, from the Tao Te Ching. The most, the one you've heard that's in the modern day public lexicon is the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That's from Lao Tzu. Um, he's, he writes, life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. Oh, acceptance. Um, and then he, this, I, this is like my favorite thing. He says, those who know, do not speak. Those who speak, do not know. Um, mm. podcast. Yeah, here we are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention yep. too, um, I, uh, for those that are interested in reading or listening to, the, um, Dao De Ching, uh, Stephen Mitchell, uh, his version on Audible is really, really fantastic. I really love his interpretation and his read of it. Um, it's one of those audiobooks that I can flip on at any minute, at anywhere in it. It doesn't matter where, and uh, and it's totally relevant for what I'm doing in that moment. So, big fan. Thanks for sh- shouting that out. Um, he's married to Byron Katie, by the really? way. Really? <laughs> if you knew that. Yeah. I did not know that next next yeah. on our list of topics today wow right? <laughs> she was doing the work before and got a divorce i i can only imagine the marital strife she talks very humorously about kind of after her awakening and like her husband her her, her first husband um but uh yeah they're they're together they wrote a book together um on the diamond sutra byron katie's the work in in uh similarity with the, the the diamond sutra so that is which is a buddhist text so that's some kind of uh mystic philosophy tmz <laughs> <laughs> that, is, married to who. that is super cool i had no idea i i've always yeah, i yeah. actually i don't know a whole lot of stephen mitchell's work but his was the the audible version that i got and i've I, it was it's perfect like i love it so much i love his interpretation awesome. and his read of it so yeah he's a translator yeah is primarily yep. his uh work yeah. yeah he translates a lot of eastern texts that's great thanks for, no thanks for calling that out i will yeah. we'll definitely link to that um so those are really the main two those are kind of my favorite as far as like the ancient kind of far eastern appreciators uh or, or ancestors i should say of this modern movement um you know fellow um kind of uh you know admirers i should say of those philosophies um you know are are what brought this whole modern movement uh to the fore um buddhist meditation was huge um and a big part of that is don uh dr john cabot zen his system that he developed in the 70s called mbsr you might have heard of mindfulness based stress reduction um they just he started meditating in hospitals um it he thought it all up with uh, doing meditation at Sharon Salzberg and Jack Cornfield's Insight Meditation Society um which is the first american founded buddhist meditation center in america and um you know those kind of 70s um like post counterculture post india uh, American explorers that came back and brought kind of cool techniques and, and books and, and concepts here. Um, they're kind of all monumental figures now in, in the modern day spiritual scene. Um, but they, it's, they've been doing it for decades and it comes from a sincere practice. And, um, you know, Cabot Zen, he, he, he does amazing work with, um, with particularly sick people and, and dying people. Um, and terminal illness type stuff by by doing mindfulness meditation, very stripped down, secular, um, um, you know, meditation in hospitals and things like that. So shout out mm. to the MBSR movement. 
um, you know, in, in mindful material, you'll see references to that stuff. And, um, and feel free to jump in guys, by the way, I'm not trying to, trying to zoom through this. Um, Mm -hmm. but, um, but wanted to mainly call him out in, in Salzburg and Cornfield. Um, and I'd also lump in, um, CBT and also the Stoics into mindful material. So CBT or cognitive behavior therapy is a type of psychotherapy, um, that, that I'll, I'll add in here. Um, Jules Evans is an author, a uh, British author who's great. He describes in his books and lectures, uh, a lot about how CBT helped him. Um, and it was founded by this guy, Albert Ellis this American, um, mid-century psychotherapist who was frustrated back in the forties, fifties of, um, kind of the limitations, um, in, in Freud, and the, lack of a practical application of Freudian theory. And so Ellis basically found what he was looking for in the ancient Greeks, um, particularly the Stoics. And the Stoics have had this renaissance in recent years um, due to their practical mind training. There's the last 10 years. There's just like now there's like Stoic coffee uh, meetups and um, (laughs) I think there's like a Stoic fest and stuff there that Jules Evans (laughs) was a part of. So, um, you know, kind of CBT, um, using these kinds of techniques, it was actually Albert, uh, Albert Ellis read this Epictetus quote is what started it. He says, quote, man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. Um, and he was just like, okay, that's, that's a, there's something there in, in forming a system. Um, and I'll say that the, the Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius's meditations you might have heard of. It's the most famous text, most famous Stoic book. Um, but there's, there's great contributions by other ancient think- thinkers. Seneca was a senator and Epictetus, uh, is just my favorite. He's really great. Um, hmm. it's also cool that Marcus Aurelius was an emperor. You know, they had, yeah, Nero, and, um, you know, Caligula, and there were terrible ones also. Mm-hmm. Um, there were cool ones. Marcus Aurelius was an interesting one. Uh, and it was meditation, it was his journal that he, um, mm. you know, uh, it's like one of the most uh, sold books like in America, like last year or something like that. So pretty good stuff. Yeah, I've seen a big rise in it as well. Just a lot of friends who um, are, I've never known to be, have. I guess too much of a spiritual practice, but are really into a lot mm-hmm. of the stoicism stuff. So, um, yeah, totally. it's, I definitely recommend it to anyone interested. I have a feeling that it's like correlated with the last 10 years and like how heavily we use, uh, like smartphones and social media. I just, I have a hunch that that's like, people are desperate for, uh, mindful thought systems like that, especially right now. <laughs> They're just like desperate for some kind of like totally real clarity and 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 just peace because it's it's like so easy to get like a frenetic mind in our in our day. <laughs> you jump it ahead. Uh, no, um, <laughs> you're absolutely right. And um, well, I'm happy to pause my lecture here um, because I don't want to be too uh, stuffy, um, you know, lecture hall. But uh, but you're right. I mean, I think. People are pining for uh, something to take us out of um, the stimuli response, digital, uh, like stuck in a loop of email and Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, texts, Mm. everything. Um, And yeah, this stuff's useful. It's like, I think too, I mean, to to your point, Ryan, the the secular aspect of it is, is is a key kind of component i would say to to what i'm calling mindful material um <clears throat> it's very stripped away from um from from metaphysical that's that's the next episode metaphysical is is this other segment of material that's a bit more abrahamic tradition um you know soulful stuff is is kind of uh in that category mindful is 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 kind of agnostic it's kind of buddhist buddhistly agnostic to kind of take it or leave it you know it's those, it, that's great or it doesn't matter because it's 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 um it's it's just secular secular practical we'll get into that more 
Um, this is a quote from Marcus Aurelius that I love. He says, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Beautiful. Really great for a emperor. Yeah. For an emperor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, so real quick on Epictetus before we keep moving, keep moving too. He was a Greek Stoic philosopher. Um, he was probably born a slave, um, which, uh, you know, contributed to his development of the system in a, in a way, um, because it, it's all about kind of resisting the external aspects. Um, you know, things, there are things you can control and things you can't control. And what you can control is your mind and your reactions. Um, he lived in Rome until his exile in northwestern Greece, where he lived most of his life and died. He was exiled because he was that good, you know. Um, and philosophy he taught, I think the main, the main thing, too, about the Stoics as far as practical is it, it is a way of life. It's not just a theoretical discipline. Um, to Epictetus is a nice little bio I saw. To Epictetus, all external events are determined by fate and are thus beyond our control. But we can accept whatever happens calmly and dispassionately. Um, he's, he's there. I read that quote about uh, worried by real problems, not uh, so much as his imagined anxieties about real problems. He also says, don't just say you've read books. Show that through them you've learned to think better, to be a more discriminating and reflective person. Books are the training weights of the mind. They're very helpful but it would be a mistake to suppose that one has made progress simply by having internalized their contents. Um, hmm. Spot on. As a yeah, as a as a guy with two shelves visible <laughs> in my camera <laughs> webcam, um, that's a good one. Uh, he also they also have this great humility. He says, "He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at." <laughs> um, so, love Epictetus, love the Stoics. Um, you know, we could probably that do idea, the idea you mentioned that is about the um the like the the it's not the thing itself, but it's the thought that you're afraid of. Is that like where did that originate? Because I feel like I just heard that in one of our talks like a week or two ago. Is that Byron Katie? Does she kind of or is I'm probably confusing it with something else? Yeah, you're you're looking at the next segue. Are you? No, it's you don't have the agenda open. No, so you no. just <laughs> well no but no but I've I've been ready for you to get into Byron Katie though so I'm 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 teasing it without knowing I've been amping up Byron Katie so hard <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> um she's really good um now let me see if I can find you guys give me a second uh dot yeah. dot dot ellipsis for editing this shit out uh I'm I'm this Jules Evans book is pretty good it's called philosophy for life and um he, he has this like page is real simple it has like two columns it's like things you can control things you can't control <laughs> um it's a part of the Serenity really good part too yes yes it is uh which is the, a like intro type thing right tell, tell mm. us more about that I mean, I yeah, the Serenity Prayer. I don't. I would. I don't think I'd be able to recall it word for word. But uh, it's yeah. Um, you know, uh, God grant me the power to accept the things I can change and and the things accept the things I cannot change. Something something along those lines. But it's it's literally based mm -hmm. on that quote. Like that is the core of the Serenity Prayer. Hmm. Which yeah. is a that's like the the um, I believe the kind of the main prayer in Alcoholics Anonymous. So it's like one of the, the their main prayers. Um, hmm. But yeah. Super useful. Yeah. Is that the one that includes the, uh, and the wisdom to know the difference between the two? Is that part of it? Or? Yes. <laughs> that, yeah, I think that's, I don't, actually, I don't know if that's a part of the Serenity Prayer. Maybe it is. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. That was, that was just a stipulation that got added later. It was like, by the way, it's, You'll have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you should be able to determine them or else you're screwed. Because you'll <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be freaking out about some things. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Sorry. I promise. I've got to be close. <laughs> okay. Not in our control. 
Our body, our property, our reputation, our job, our parents, our friends, our co-workers, our boss, the weather, the economy, the past, the future, the fact we're going to die. Not in our control. In our control, our beliefs. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and the first list is um, so long, though. It's like, that's, that's an Instagram story. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Which is also um, the, one great. of the other few things in my control. Um, is my beliefs, story. my... What I choose to Instagram story. <laughs> That's right. Very, very few things. Um, but not how many views or there. likes I will get, which um, is <laughs> not in your control. It's a big one to wrap. Not in your control. Hard, hard to wrap your mind around. Reacts that for a lot of people, including me. Yeah. Yeah. This should have got five hard eye reacts. How did it only get one? <laughs> From Scott. <laughs> Only from Scott. Great. Um, <laughs> we're off the rails. Okay. So seriously, though, Byron Katie is the next bullet point. And um, either we're on this intuitive kind of connection right now, things are just going really great, or you looked at this agenda and just had a memory of it <laughs> in your subconscious. <laughs> Um, I don't want to talk about her too much because I want to talk about her for like a whole hour in the future. Um, but her her work, it's called The Work, capital W, is um, certainly under mindful material um, in, in the Beware How, you know, original segmentation definitions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> trademark. trademark. Copyright. Um, <laughs> It's um the, the what's nice about the work is it's extremely direct and it's extremely simple. Um it's four questions and a turnaround. And, and it's the whole thing is designed to help us investigate our own false stories about ourselves and others. Um this is a quote from her. She says, As long as you think that the cause of your problem is out there, as long as you think that anyone or anything is responsible for your suffering, the situation is hopeless. It's it's all about your beliefs, your reaction to. Um, there's, it's not for everyone, even Byron Katie, because there's some people that you know. I don't know if we want yeah. to get into this too much, but um, no, I could hear pushback on that. I, there's I, pushback from it. some people. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely pushback from some people, and yeah. you know, let's just let's save it for the future. But um, it's how, it's you know, how it it's works. it's yeah. what yeah, what are the it's how it works. Questions? The four questions are, um, and you kind of first have to get into a meditative state. Um, uh, really, what what it is is it begins with you write out a judgment, like a, a an issue with yourself or something else. She's very uh, explicit that you need to write it down um, because if you're just doing it in your head, your mind or your ego mind is so easy, uh, is, is so sophisticated at justifying that it really helps you to work it out on paper um and so what you do is yeah you write down your judgment um you know i think i did this one with you guys i don't know if it get to air or whatever but um like pete when i talk about spirituality people will think i'm crazy was one that i had and didn't work through and maybe it's true oh my god uh here i am <laughs> The light's on. Um, it's happening. Um, <laughs> you sit with it. I wrote it down. And I, you sit with it and you say, is this true? Is the first question. And, um, you know, no, it's not true. There's, you know, then you start you start listing examples why that might not be true. Well, a lot of people talk about spirituality that aren't crazy. Um, you know, I'm not crazy because I have a good job. I have a woman who loves me for 10 years. Um, you know, people ask me for advice. Helps strangely, hilariously. <laughs> um, you know, the, you you just, is this true is the first one. If, if, if that was, um, was a yes, um, you know, sometimes there are yeses, actually. And 
Um, the second one is, can you absolutely know that it's true? Which is kind of a, you know, Catch very few things in life can are absolutely true, right? Or yeah. known to be true. Um, and then the third one is, um, can you think of a stress-free reason to th- drop the thought or to keep the thought? I, I should just I, yeah, I'll I'll switch three and four. <laughs> what would you be like without the thought here we, go. here we go i'll just read. one is it true two can you absolutely know it's true three how do you react when you believe that thought and four what would you be without the thought hmm. um and you know three is it's kind of designed how do you react what happens when you believe that thought uh, you know that people think i'm crazy and talk about spiritually spirituality um anxious self-critical um you know cold in my hands and you know whatever it is you kind of live in that and then you go to the fourth one which is who would you be without the thought um i would just be free to talk about spiritual topics and that are interesting to me without any fear or concern or anxiety around the perception of other people thinking i'm what I am or what I'm not, um, you know, liberating. Uh, you would be just who you are. Um, so it's really good. I mean, I really, really strongly recommend um, looking her up. And she has a ton of YouTube videos. Her first book is called uh, Loving What Is. Um, so there's kind of some Taoist acceptance in kind of the way of yeah. things. And, um, you know, what's like- ironically Stephen Miller's wife. Uh, yeah. yeah. I like that her fourth question uh, kind of almost always ends up with like a feeling of liberation. Um, like totally and it, it's because, because of course it, you're starting from a place of fear and then like those questions lead you to like, just imagine what, and you can usually, you can imagine yourself real briefly, like what you would feel like if that thought was just like gone entirely. And it's, and it's pretty much always just this like, ah, like relief, liberate, you know, like I'm free of that, like prison, of like my anxiety and my like, uh, you know, shame and all just all those things that come with that come with fear. hundred <laughs> percent. There's, there's so many cool, um, to all these YouTube videos and, um, I'm going to start uploading some of them that, um, you know, that won't be monetized, but, uh, there's like some on our official channel and some on people's unofficial. Anyway, I want to add kind of my favorites to our YouTube, but there's one that's my wife wastes her days. And it's this guy, you know, she, they go up to the stage wherever she, she goes on tour and she does a lot of, I think she's in California is where they are. And she'll still have these big seminars and people will come up and sit next to her in front of 300 people. And that's what these videos are. And um, this one guy's was my wife wastes her days. And he's like, uh, she's a stay-at-home mom raising their boy, their boys, and he is like this busy director of this nonprofit, and it's so great. And this happens in many of them, um, but like, because he'll be like, "Is it true?" Well, yeah, she does. You know, can you absolutely know true? Uh, I guess I can't. You know, how do you react? What happens when you believe the thought? He's like, "Well, I get really, um, I come home and I get so angry and I get so kind of distant from her." And then, and I don't enjoy the evening with them because I'm so caught up in, you know, that idea. And she's like, uh, kind of like you waste your day, you know, <laughs> like she's very, <laughs> and then the audience is just like, oh, like nice. what you, what your judgment is and what your accusation is very often applies to yourself. And, um, yeah, they're just, they're beautiful. They're, they're very like heart opening, li- mm. you know, like you said, liberating aspects. They're awesome. Kind of reminds me of, um, I've been listening, I, I do listen to a lot of Tara Brock, um, big fan of her. She's got a, a few really good books and she's yeah. got a podcast that uh, she puts out new episodes and um, meditations weekly, but um, uh, lately she's been covering a lot on this acronym, this type of meditation called RAIN, um, and stands for Recognize, Allow, Investigate, and Nurture, and um Specifically, uh, when you're dealing with like fear and anger and things like that, it's something that um, 
uh, is encouraged to, to use in an instance like that. But these kind of four questions from Byron Katie feel like they, they fit in that investigate section. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I really enjoy totally. that, that rain, um, uh, acronym and, and just kind of like walking through those steps, uh, that's great in a time of fear, or anger, things like that. She's terrific, and she's doing work with Jack Cornfield too. I mean, she's she's definitely yeah. a big time meditation teacher. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I dig that. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, to your point, I mean, there there is a self inquiry aspect to the mindful, to the secular um, kind of mental mental training practices um, that we'll loop back to in the non dual section. Cool. Because that exists in non-dual also. Um, metaphysical, less so. Um, metaphysical is a bit more kind of otherworldly, whereas both, I would say both kind of the mindful material and the non-dual material, as I define it, are, um, you know, involve self-inquiry and um, self-investigation. Super important. Self-awareness, you know, mm-hmm. presence, all those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, just like a note. I, I Oh, go ahead. The uh, yeah, just like going in the reverse direction. I also assume that like a lot of non secular practices have mindfulness kind of nested in within them. Uh, but yeah, it's I, I uh, like I, I was actually thinking of your um, uh, your your documentary how the that uh, there was a Christian pastor who I remember the line of his that I I kind of enjoy. I remember is he was saying that he was like oh, you know. Hinduism doesn't have a corner on the market with mindfulness, I think is something he said. And I kind of appreciated that, like, just to remember, like, yeah, it's like everyone's trying to get to that point. And um, we're focusing on like the non-secular version. But yeah, it's it's um, I think it's it's there's a reason it's so there's a reason the word Zen, it, like you see it five times a day. You know, it's because it's like people are realize how crucial it is to like um, control uh our minds because they are so busy with thought all the time it's just like constant and like there has to be a way to deal with that or else you know you, you'll just you'll suffer uh if you don't like uh contain that but anyway just uh tangent of no you're right continue. no i mean i'm happy to you know stay hang out there for a little bit i mean it's it's true that um, you know, a lot of people, I think, in in the modern world are just, you know, live their lives completely unaware, you know, um, unfortunately for them that that they are just kind of thinking all the time without any um, either self-awareness or, um, you know, process or practice or ritual to, um, you know, come out of it like Ram Das and I, he's so great but his lectures in the 70s and 80s to me are just my favorite in some in early 90s um he talks a lot about like you know it, it, it's basically like this um you know computer oh there's a wall it's a white wall and um this light's on and I guess I maybe I'll turn that light off next time and um oh I'm hungry and I'll just I'll have to go make get some food after this and then after that, I think we're going to, you know, probably get a movie. Gotta check and then, the mail. oh, when the movie's on, I'll get popcorn. Yeah, and I haven't checked the mail today. Yeah, and you're just, you're just always doing that. And it's like it's so exhausting. Just lists. Um, <laughs> then you just go to yeah. sleep. <laughs> you wake up and you, you know, you kind of have that process in the morning. So, um, so yeah, what, what these practices, I think all, really all three of them um, are designed to do um, in a sense is, is – uh, you know, bring bring some awareness to to our thoughts to 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 halt the monkey mind and and uh, you know the, the the variations between the traditions are the variations on the technique itself, um, but but I think that's the end goal. Um, certainly in Buddhism, certainly in you know um, you know and, and Byron Katie isn't as much of a meditation. Um, as much as she endorses meditation as a um, kind of requisite to be in the state, to, to then do the work. You know, I think if, if you were to make a scholarly distinction among the mindful material, it's like how much emphasis is on 
um, just meditating and just sitting still versus is there kind of an additional aspect of the process, um, which which I think, again, the non-dual section will have more uh, about, well, what is a secondary aspect to that look like? Um, but uh, but it's useful stuff. I mean, I think what what's so um, interesting to me about it is or or, or useful um, in in spiritual discussion and kind of philosophical discussion is that because it's secular, unlike these other um, systems, because the mindful material is all secular, it's all devoid of God, of religion, of um, you know these heavy words that turn people off, and we talk about this in the Easter ep. So check it out. It's mm. really <laughs> proud of that one. Um, but you know, it's, it's, I could talk to anyone about this stuff and, you know, the, the most hardline atheist, scientist, materialist, um, folks, um, you know, people who are, are, are typically more closed off to this type of material than, um, you know, don't, don't know who Thich Nhat Hanh is and don't know who, um, you know, these, these people are, this history is, um, they also have, are, have their thoughts dominate their lives as well. You know, it's like, it's so universally applicable, um, and approachable that, you know, that's why it's, it, it's, it's blowing up. Um, it's really emerging right now. Um, you know, the mindfulness movement, so to speak, it's in corporations, it's in schools, prisons, um, police training, uh, first responder training. Um, it's so prevalent that I'm actually a co-lead of the Mindfulness Club at Facebook in our Austin office. Um, my good friend Melina is another co-lead um, of the club, and she's in some of the Beware How branding. We'll likely see more from her in the future, um, and, and probably some of our other co-leads as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's that you know, I'm involved. That's how <laughs> that's how I'm over the you know. Uh, hump and that's how emerged this has become in modern day society um it's useful and it's also backed by science i mean particularly to to you scott um in that you were raised by scientists and you know people who do have like such a scientific point of view which i you know honor and i think that's something we haven't really talked about we will talk about that a lot in the metaphysical episode um, because that's where the science, angry science people, um, it'll emerge there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go down that rabbit hole then, but, um, I've actually, you know, this, uh, this one is. There's a, there's a, um, a part of the great courses on Audible. Um, there's a book called The Science of Mindfulness, and I've had a lot of friends yeah. who are not particularly spiritual and more, a little bit more on the science side who that was a that was a stepping stone for them um, because of how deep they dive into kind of the science um, and the research uh, based in mindfulness. So I personally have not listened to it. I think I'm going to pick it up. I've got a few credits. I'm really curious to listen to it, but um, I've heard a lot of really great things. So I wanted to put that out there. Great. No, yeah. Thanks for referencing that there. Um, Dan Goleman, is, he wrote Emotional Intelligence. He just wrote a book called Altered Traits. He's a mm. famous um, psychologist who actually studied with Neem Karoli Baba and Ram Das. It's kind of like a hidden connection there. But, nice. um, you know, he's he's one of the pioneers. Him and John Kabat-Zinn and, and, and Salzburg and Cornfield and Joseph Goldstein. Um, you know, Dan Goleman's kind of the psychologist. Um uh, that just dove in and, and, uh, neurologist, um, who's the Richard Davidson, um, those, those two, um, doctors, scientists in particular that have studied, you know, they started putting EEG machines on Buddhists and, you know, studied the areas of their brain that would light up, um, quick, more quicker than people who don't meditate. Um, you know, there's just, there's so many studies now, um, that just talk about the benefits, which are, you know, I guess it's easy to explain that, you know, a way more so than the metaphysical than the non-dual, um, you know, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, sitting down and breathing 
deeply is is good you know most people don't <laughs> that's not that extreme of a claim yeah um it's not a but, stretch but it's a yeah. way in yeah looks like this book yeah. is uh written and read by uh ronald siegel i don't know if okay. you're familiar with him yeah it's called the science of mindfulness cool. on the great the great courses on uh, audible awesome yeah i'd say that one in altered traits um is dan goleman just going in nice. on on why why meditation and these kinds of practices are are useful they they um mm. you know help to reduce stress they you know in in our job in our work environment you know one of the things our club is so focused on is you know giving people practical tips um i mean working at facebook is so insanely um you know you're getting messaged you're getting emails i, I work with agencies and they have needs and, you know, there's also internal HR needs and go to the seminars and go to all these things and keep up on the product that's updating. Um, you know, we talk about it in the club. It's like there's there's so many it, – it's such a ripe environment for this kind of practice. You know, the modern world as a whole, certainly. Um, but particularly our, our company, it's like, you know, I don't – you know, we joke. It's like how do, how do people do this? job without these practices mm -hmm. because they're, it's so you're handicapped if you're not you know trying to stay present trying to stay focused you know one one thing we came up with recently was like when you open up your computer you know take a couple of breaths um before you kind of just jump into the email before you do that and you know there's there's a couple of practical tips here um that uh that i'll just touch on you know i think obviously meditation is the foundation um, even just a few minutes taking, you know, either at the beginning, I like morning meditation, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be whenever, um, you know, you have a minute or if you're, especially if you are overwhelmed and you notice you're overwhelmed, um, to sit quietly, um, you know, focusing on one thing at a time, the Thich Nhat Hanh quote on, on kind of the presence, you know, multitasking is, is wrong that that was a lie i mean it's like it's like trickle down economics so it doesn't those are falsehoods in our culture um this this uh article i was looking at said that studies have found the tasks take 50 percent longer with 50 percent more errors um, when multitasking multitasking so try out this new thing called unitasking <laughs> um, <laughs> try it out <laughs> Um, you know, things like that. There's a couple more, but feel, feel free to jump in guys. I mean, that's, that's the rub. Mm. Yeah. I have, uh, an interesting relationship with multitasking. I, yeah, I like, I know that if I do it too much, I'm just like, I'm totally spreading myself thin and I get overwhelmed and I'm just trying to do too much. But, um, but at the same time, I'm always like, no, I can do this. Like, I, I can I can make this work and it's a kind of a constant battle. Um and so yeah. I, I think the practice is always trying to limit the amount of multitasking and trying to be present with whatever I am mm. doing. But it is it is really difficult in our kind of modern modern world. I've tried to uh I, I've I'm actually I'm very bad at multitasking, so I don't even try. But that doesn't uh, that doesn't that doesn't save me from the problem because I've noticed that I like I don't know what to call it. I'm like multi thought tasking before I even start anything where I'll I, you know, and, and maybe this is like a byproduct of the fact that I have a lot of interests. And so I'm trying to like juggle various um, interests at the same time. But like I have my list of, you know, my like top three to five projects I'm working on at any given time. And like my brain will literally try to start working on all five at the same time. And like, <laughs> I can't, it's so hard to turn that. So like, like it, 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 my brain wants to solve them all at once. And like, I'm just sitting there, I'm doing nothing. I'm being useless. And still my brain is like trying to like overwork and overtask itself. And like, I don't know how to how to solve that but that's where i'm at that's what i've noticed with myself. you're like that so, yeah. track needs a steel guitar and then that character <laughs> needs to meet that character and that yeah like, that's all like, and <laughs> this dog needs extra love <laughs> yeah right yeah 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 and i need to go hike these dogs and i need to you know cook this food or whatever but yeah well, it, this it's is, like <laughs> I, 
I walk around with this now um, because of that. I'm the same way in that, like, I'll just get ideas for, like, a, it's either, like, a piece or, yeah. um, like, a film project or, like, something to do with this with this project um, or, like, a quote that I need to associate with that, you know, essay to make it stronger. Um, yeah. So what I've noticed is it, carrying that around, I'll just write it down very quickly. And, I'll, you know, phone, obviously, too. My phone's full of notes and yeah. jumbles and ideas. But um, but the phone is another whole thing because it, you open oh, yeah. it up and then you have, yeah. oh, and you know, where do I go hole. in there? Yeah. So I just, I like, territory. now I like the page. Yeah. And so I'll do, like, Sunday mornings, you know, meditate, read a, uh, you know, a couple pages or something from, from a contemplative and then go through my notes from the past few days past week or so and mm-hmm. like kind of just straighten out my my paper mind so yeah yeah whatever yeah whatever that yeah. Uh, yeah i try to it, re- recording thoughts is is helpful so you can like get it down and then like give yourself the clearance to to forget it for now <laughs> um but yeah yeah there there's like a um, uh I don't know it, it yeah I, I i i'll try to look at all the things i'm working on and then um there will be this like guilt of like not diving into one or the other and like no matter where you, it's like getting stuck in the front door of like what i want to start thinking about and like it's like stuck at the threshold or something i don't know what to call it um scott you're but, perfectly this demo for this show <laughs> and these emails <laughs> ironically that you're on that's why i'm here this is I'm made for first, you i'm your first uh customer or whatever you call it <laughs> no, I'm not you really anything, are but... yeah that's what this is it's a business so i uh i don't know if we've talked We're about moving this ideas uh, before but i um on the topic of that and like lists and stuff um i like last year made a, a conscious decision to like stop making to-do lists because I realized mm-hmm. I was making too many of them and I was just getting overwhelmed and stressed by them of like yeah, always sure, yeah. having a list of things to do, you know, and um, it, it it's very liberating to like stop making to do lists. And, and kind of what I do now is if I need to make a list, it's very short and it's only the most the most important things, you know, um, kind of the, the big ones and um, yeah, and th- or things that need to be taken care of, like kind of immediately in the next like day or so you know but uh other than that um i just kind of trust i just kind of surrender and just like trust that like if this thing is important enough it's going to come back up and i'm going to be able to take care of it when i need to take care of it and uh it helped a lot like just like stop making Mm. lists um but yeah that was Mm. that was a big that's cool big shift for me the last year that's scary yeah it's scary. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it I've <is> consolidated. <laughs> it's definitely smart. I, I'm plus one to that. It's a part of the um, part of couple, the process of releasing yeah, releasing control. I think was because that was a big theme for me. Was yeah. like releasing control, and uh, that was one of the areas that I realized I could release some control, and it's very it's very liberating to be able to do that. Yeah. Totally. Mm. Um, and also there's kind of, you know, back to the Zen piece, it's like to-do lists or future anxiety. Thich Nhat Hanh says, totally. no one has ever, no one has ever lived in the past or the future, only the now. Um, you know, the now has kind of become culturally cliche or whatever, but, uh, live in the now <laughs> yeah i mean and Eck- eckhart tolle is actually great I, I, I should shout out him and his work um but he's kind of now lumped into this like pop spirituality you know um kind of like a cartoonish mm-hmm. representation but um but he's great i, I really like eckhart uh tolle as well and uh, uh power of now is his book and, and then so be here now is ram das there was actually a panel of those two after Ram Dass's stroke um, in, in Hawaii a few, you know, 10 years ago or something like that. And the moderator goes, we have Ram Dass and Eckhart Tolle, uh, uh, you know, be here now and power now. 
tonight we have a whole lot of now. <laughs> like, excellent. Um, <laughs> so, okay, a couple more here. And I do want to touch on limitation a little bit just to maybe go out edgy. But um, I'd say the end goal of mindful material is presence, present awareness. Um, Deepak Chopra, another famous author who has written great stuff. Um, who we'll talk, we'll talk about him more in the metaphysics with Sam Harris debates and all that stuff. But, um, he has a good quote in this new film, um, the mindfulness movement, which is nice education about this stuff too. Um, he says, mindfulness implies a full mind. So it's not really the perfect word for what it is. Um, but awarefulness doesn't sound good in the English language. <laughs> so we'll stick with mindfulness. Mm. You know, it's a, it's actually not necessarily about filling your mind, but 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 being aware, yeah, being that's aware good. of the present moment. So that's an important, uh, mm. I think, distinction or or misinterpretation that might uh, that that we see a lot in people kind of new to that term. So I, um, I need to be like yeah. less mindful in a more literal sense <laughs> and more awareful. Um, uh, you broke up. Sorry. Say it again. I say I so I'm just like com, I, that quote. I'm like relating it to my own issues, and I'm like so I in a way need to be less mindful, like th- not be constantly packing my mind. It's like with two L's, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I and it usually and when I do that, it usually pays off because the thoughts or ideas I have, uh, I generally like them the best when I'm when when they arrive to me instead of me trying to like dig through and and hunt them down and um yeah i don't know i think i heard a musician at some point described it as just like just be a human stop trying to like think about being a human and and like think about what it is and all that stuff and it's like just 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 be (laughs) but that's easier easier yeah it might be cool scott i mean this is you know we can edit this part out if it's not a fail but um it might it might be interesting because it sounds like you're such a um, you know, uh, an ideal candidate for some of the neurotic you mean practices <laughs> <laughs> because you're so far gone. Um, <laughs> the, you know, maybe maybe you know, read some of this materials, read a book or two of the from these sources. Um, you know, I'd say probably a Thich Nhat Hanh book. Um, mm. He has a couple of ones specifically on mindfulness and presence. Pieces every um, step, and then report That's back. One of my favorites. It's he's so prolific. I haven't even heard of that one. That's great. Um, yeah, so you know maybe that could be a cool kind of. I'm not your fourth grade teacher getting asking for a book report, but um, <laughs> I can I can but, report back, um, see what I got. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, uh, I, please. I should. Uh, yeah, I, I'll jump into some of the mindful stuff right now. I'm listening to. Uh, Vivekananda, but yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll take. I'll oh, great! Oh, multiple sources at the don't same Don't let time, me but. steal you from him. He's, he's <laughs> terrific, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I don't know. I think, I think you are just such a, because you are kind of polymath type of thinker to me, and you too, Ryan. You guys both make art and, um, in, in, in work with concepts and all these different media that I don't really do. I can. Writing and film is kind of my lanes. Stay in those two. Um, and uh, I learned how to build a website, bewarehow.com. No, um, <laughs> I I'm, I don't really consider myself a designer or anything else other than kind of writing and film. And so, um, so it, it, it's, you know, it, it's kind of nice because then I, I feel like in some ways I get to specialize. But, um, you know, you guys are doing music and, and uh, Scott's writing and Ryan, you're designing and all this stuff. And, and, and several of my friends, I mean, I think Zane Rittenberg also is one of our best buddies and he's a painter and a musician. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 I can, you know, empathize with you guys from afar of like, if, if my motor is, is, is difficult to mitigate, uh, you know, with, with only a couple of distractions, then, then you know, mm. it, yeah, you know, you can get caught in the waves for sure. 
I think we all come with, you know, like we all have our own baggage, obviously. And, you know, it's yeah, I'm sure it is related to like this, the, the kinds of things we work on. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to blame that for my own, you know, like baggage that I knew I, I, I would have it no matter what I was doing. And, and um, I think one of the things I've noticed is like um, I dive so hard into into like work, uh, whether it's like creative mm. work or whatever. And that becomes uh, like I've just become like so wrapped up in it that um, uh, it's just so easy to get carried away. And like you look up, you know, like hours or days later, like, whoa, I need to like I need to like do some maintenance here and some self-care because like I'm just trying to like output, output, create, create. And then it and then it can uh, you just get drained and you uh, you you need you need a balance and you need some like some mindfulness to, to help like uh, structure the flow. I guess I'm glad you brought that up because we didn't actually really talk about that in the creatives episode, but the, um, we've done a few of these before number one, (laughs) sorry, what is time and linearity really? (laughs) Um, but, uh, what I think what you're getting at is flow state, you know, a little bit, which is, a a neuroscientific term. Um, you know, it's, it's a pop psychology term, but it's also, there's neuroscience behind, um, I believe it's gamma waves. I'm sorry, I'm not a neuroscientist. I want to get more familiar with some of those terminology, but um, it, it, it's when you are so solely focused on a task, you know, kind of again relating back to the mm. dishwashing quote. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's like Olympians and people like that 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 you know um, are so in it um the best the best athletes the best performers the best artists you know i think that's how you make the best stuff frankly is when you are Mm. completely immersed um and into that process um you know but then it comes with a cost that's that's super important (laughs) (laughs) which is hygiene (laughs) yeah several several bills No, but no, I've heard, uh, you know, like, uh, screenwriters talk about like how the, you know, their alcoholism stems from their workaholism because they'll dive so Mm -hmm. hard in that they, when they exit that, that, that state, they're, they're just kind of a wreck afterward because they weren't, uh, you know, they, they, it's, yeah, that's where this stuff can, can be helpful and just like balancing that, I guess. Our film, one of my film professors would warn us against that. Like, you know, everybody does everything last minute in college yeah. and we would finish editing stuff. And it, I do enjoy, I mean, those are fond memories of like staying yeah. up late for three nights and finishing the cut before the thing. But like, you know, he would say like, just don't do that, you know, don't have Jack in the Box for you know those late nights and where you because you feel like a filmmaker you know you're just a kid with the thing where you're just 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 living in the, this cut and just you know <laughs> trying, to, trying to make it work but uh yeah it can be it can be damaging also and and another couple of these tips actually um that i stole from this source that i will link um does talk to about um moving you know, walking, yoga, stretching, um, and, and, and nature, you know, I think nature is also a key part of, um, of the mindful material, both Zen Buddhism and Taoism. Um, yeah. the, the kind of ancestral philosophies are reverent of nature. Half of Thich Nhat Hanh's kind of spiritual imagery involves flowers and clouds and um you know i think nature just by its very design by its um the environment itself is uh you know different than all these blue lights and machine noises and uh, angry people so yeah um, that's why i like working with animals that. yeah yeah it's your job <laughs> actually you so to, yeah it's force they force you to live in the moment because that's all they can do <laughs> so yeah, that's why exactly. i love being around them <laughs> When I was uh, home over Christmas, my my uncle is uh used to be a dog trainer and groomer, and um he had a dog and a new dog, and he and we were talking about uh books and and uh, audio books that we enjoyed and a lot of spiritual topics, and and he was like, you know, you know, dogs are Buddhists, and I was like, I was like, oh yeah, 
Mm. He's like, yeah, they, there is no yesterday and there is no tomorrow. There's only right now. <laughs> and I was like, it's mm. totally true. Spot on. Yeah. It's we, extremely we're... admirable state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're the masters. Like we, we are, we're like blessed and cursed with these like incredibly powerful memories and intellects, but in it, and it comes with some, some big downsides, you know, like that power comes with some, like it, you can, some dark rabbit holes. Um, and so, yeah, it's just nice to like be around beings that don't necessarily have those issues, you know, like they just get to, to just exist and notice what's around them at any given moment, which, uh, is nice. And I try to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> but they also think all my neighbors are the enemy. <laughs> and they that's true that's true there's some cons uh, yeah um no i love my doggy mm -hmm. um guess it depends right. on the animal <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah also follow pup scouts on instagram <laughs> <laughs> scott has how many you got oh i got a, a dozen or so puppies i, yeah. I take i mean take i know hiking. it's different right now too but yeah yeah, I haven't seen him in like three weeks, so I feel weird. I'm usually in nature almost every day, and this has been the first month in years that that's not been the case, and I can feel the difference. Like I am, yeah, uh, I am certified less zen right now than I was a month ago. <laughs> uh, Which is particularly great time to pick up. Uh, what was yeah. that? Which one? Pieces? Which one, Ryan? Oh, pieces every step. Pieces every step. Peace is every step. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so limitation, last p, last part here, last piece here. Um, I think if there is a limitation of the mindful material, um, it's that it can sometimes be a bit too sanitized for me. Um, which is what can happen when a spiritual practice is made secular. The original meaning or the original power can get diluted hmm. and um you know i don't i don't want to be live in that state of mind about it too much um because that feels like an unhealthy judgmenty kind of critical hmm. view um but it's just something to be aware of um like for example when yoga became so popular over the last couple of decades you know, as Ryan alluded to, we are Kriya yogis, Kriya bonds, and, um, you know, we're not quite, we're, we're not quite institutional members, love, love our Kriya Vaughn family, but, um, we're a bit looser from an institutional perspective. Um, and, but anyway, what I guess my point is Kriya yoga is very spiritual. It's very chakra pranayama. Um, We'll get into it in the metaphysical side, but um, it's it's kind of the, you know, like when I was a young, pretentious, spiritual guy, um, it really infuriated me with when people go into the yoga class, you know, in the um, with the bags that say namaste and the, you know, which is means a beautiful saying that means the one the place of being one in me bows to and salutes to the place of being one in you and that may may there be only one of us in that realization um you know really great saying and meaning that is a bumper sticker now and it's you know it's very really commodified uh, which I, maybe that's cool actually that's a bumper sticker um who am i mm -hmm. to say it's that shitty but um you know i think it was it came out of people like treating it at, like a gem like like it's 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 not a treadmill it, it's it, patanjali wrote about this stuff you know 2000 years ago it's in the gita um you know it's a sacred practice which years later i realized um you know not very yogi like of me um to to make those kinds of judgments and assumptions about other people um because i think the positive i guess the 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 yin and yang, if I may, is that, um, you know, when people sometimes when people did go into yoga, for example, 
uh, my friend Morgan, who is in Kingdom Within, um, when she started doing yoga, it was purely for physical stuff. And um, then over time, she was like, wait a second, I'm at peace now, actually, from doing this. And I, oh, wow, wait, what was that text again? The Bhagavad, huh? And, you know, I'll, you know, I'll read that. And so, mm. so it, it is kind of a hook. It is a way into people when it is, um, you know, completely stripped of those, those initial kind of spiritual practices. But just as someone who came into uh, this material kind of from the spiritual side, um, you know, it's just something to point out. Yeah. Aren't the asanas, the poses, like, is, what is it, like one-seventh? of the the total practice one eighth one eighth. <laughs> yeah 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 ashtanga means eight limbs and asanas are the third limb um you know yeah there's yamas the yamas and niyamas are the first and second limbs those are there's several of those that are like kind of austerities and um and yeah uh, i'm not going to name all of them because this yeah, isn't a pop quiz, all right? But yeah. um, but it's a very you know it's a multifaceted system. Yeah. And um, and 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 some schools tend to neglect it. You know, others don't. There are um some great modern yoga studios that incorporate mm -hmm. uh you know kind of what what again pretentious spiritual uh, Hindu philosophy guy would would approve of. You know, I think there's a lot of great material and, and great studios that are doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, also I think a justification for that is at workplace, you know, our, our mindful club is, it is, we try to be real stripped down of some of this stuff, you know, I'll read a Thich Nhat Hanh quote, but then we sit, you know, and do some breathing and, um, you know, we don't, we don't get into too much discussion about. The, the the spiritual roots and the spiritual seeds um but that's okay you know i don't know is that a limitation maybe 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 it's not maybe it's a, it's just a cool way in um mm. but but i can't help but not mention that is, is the sanitized aspect and and maybe people you know want to stay secular with it maybe people want to dive in and, and kind of who am i to who are we to um you know, have any kind of <laughs> opinion about how how far in people go but um yeah about, but about but there are distinctions layer. yeah 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 which layer you're on which uh which album you're into at that moment on the discography <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right exactly that's a really good analogy <laughs> yeah i uh i i feel like obviously um, the early stuff it's uh mm -hmm. it's the same for any kind of I mean, yeah, that can be applied to any new topic that people are discovering, right? Whether as a, as an individual or as a culture or a society, um, it's going to be people are going to pick and choose what they like and what they don't like about it. Um, I think the fact that it is being introduced and we are seeing namaste stick bumper stickers. I mean, I'm always going to be an optimist about all that. And I um, it's the slowly cracking open of these topics, you know, and I'm I'm happy that they're here and. I think um, the only the only moment for me to be concerned is when someone starts, you know, saying that you can't have the spiritual aspect of yoga or uh, and it's only the physical like that's where it's you're really starting to mm, change right. what it was. Um, but, uh, you know, I I I think uh, I, I'm I'm grateful that it's being introduced in our culture. And um, yeah, so it does. It seems like a. A limitation in a way but i think it's a small one and uh doesn't concern me too much well and uh, yeah what it i think what it did for me too was that those judgmental thoughts were important for my self-awareness absolutely uh right and and byron katie's whole thing it may only make sense yeah. to finish this with some bk wisdom but you know her whole thing is like be grateful when you yeah. have a judgment because what a joy it is to dive into it Absolutely. and see what's under there and uh, all that. So those, you know, how spiritual is it and is it enough and that and all those kinds of silly 
um, you know, more elementary concerns I had. Um, okay. It was a few weeks ago. No, it was, it was a while. Ago. Um, <laughs> they, no, they, they did make me aware of, uh, the spectrum of kind of people's way in and, and, you know, maybe, you know, a good way to end this, to, to this episode today is just to say, um, you know they're 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 all, they're all great and whichever way in you know you you find it um is great if you want to um stay secular if you want to explore more if you you know some kind of mid mid range is what you would prefer then uh you know that that may you find what you're looking for uh regardless of, of the avenue regardless of the way in mm yeah, everyone will bring their own little limitations to it, and they can work work through them. Right, as there will be plenty of limitations brought in by humans. <laughs> We're good at that. Um, cool, <laughs> guys. Thanks so much. Um, Thank you. We ha- happy to stop there. Um, I'm I'm glad we decided to make the distinctions on mindful, metaphysical, and non dual for individual mm-hmm. episodes. Because this yeah. would have been one out of three. The six-hour uh, episode. Yeah. There would have been a six-hour first episode. Nobody's listening to our show. What's <laughs> going on? Uh, we are, we're a Star so, Wars marathon worth of podcasting. Right, right. <laughs> but that's just the first one. <laughs> okay. My mom liked it. Um, okay. Um, thanks, guys. And uh, yeah, thanks, Bob. see y'all later. All right. Great. All right. Good to see y'all. Bye.